Good evening everybody. So it's seven o'clock. It's time for our usual night prayers with St Andrew's Church in Horton Liskern. Um, you're very welcome to join us this evening as we go through the night prayer from the Church of England website or app. Um, if you haven't already got that, you might like to just listen um, or if you've got a tablet or a computer handy, you might like to log on and get to the Church of England daily prayer site or app. Um, just so you can follow through the words as we go through. Through the order of the liturgy, the service, there's the standard format of bold words where you might like to join in with me. Um, but you might like to join in just as you feel you want to. Um, some of the words I'll say for us together, other words will become familiar now, especially if you're one of our regulars. And if you're not a regular, if you're joining us for the first time, you're very welcome. And um, hopefully we will all get something out of this time together this evening. For the first time um, since we began doing night prayers for me, um, it's raining. It's gloomy outside. Um, I'm looking out into my garden. I can't sit out. I can't um, have my usual glass of wine in a sunny garden. So it's a different day today. It's got a kind of darker feel to it somehow. Um, but we hope that as we bring this day to God that... We can all find something in today to celebrate, find something in today to have seen God's goodness in. But maybe we've found things today that have been challenging. Maybe we've had difficult experiences, difficult phone calls, difficult meetings. Or maybe we haven't met anybody. Maybe we haven't spoken to anybody. And maybe that's been really difficult today as the weather's closed in and the clouds have come. So... Whatever your situation, we just hope and pray that this evening, as we come together, as the family of St Andrews, as the family of God in Hartley Skern, that you can find something in these prayers for you. And hopefully, as we leave this day behind, hopefully we've got a prayer for a brighter, both in the weather and in our own circumstances, a brighter tomorrow. Um, hopefully, the sun might shine for us. And so as we go through the liturgy on the daily prayer app for the Church of England. Um, I'll keep us right, but we will be using Psalm 16. So if you've got a Bible handy, you might like to look at that. Or you might have, like to have that ready. Psalm 16. We'll also then be using words from 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Um, we'll also be then using, um, which we've used a lot over the last few weeks, um, a gospel canticle, a little set of verses from Luke chapter 2, verse 29 to 32. So again, if you've got a Bible, you might like to find Psalm 16. You might like to find 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. And you might also like to put your finger or a little marker in Luke chapter 2, verses 29 to 32. And so as we bring this day together, let's just close our eyes. And just think back over today. Think back over everything that we've done, everything that we've been, every word we've said. And let's just leave it with God over the course of these prayers. The Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And we bring before God now the things that today has brought that we're not particularly proud of. There's always something. There's always something. There's always some little way that we've let God down. And actually, when we let God down, we've let ourselves down as well. We haven't been the people we know we can be. And we certainly haven't been the people that God made us to be. So whether big or small, it's always something. So we just call those things to mind. Because the wonderful thing about the Easter story is that we can leave those things with God. We can ask for his forgiveness. And then, as the last line of this prayer says, we're raised to new life. Let's just call to mind those things that we're not proud of. As we say these words together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another 
that we have sinned in thought, in word and in deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. We join together in the words, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And there's that wonderful Easter word, isn't it? At the end of that, when we've brought to mind all those horrible things that we've thought and said and done, that we can give them to God. We can say we're sorry, God, and we can be forgiven and we can shout again, Alleluia. There's no darkness can overcome the love of our Father God. And so we turn to our psalm, and it's Psalm 16. And the refrain for at the beginning and the end is, The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fail. The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, it's not fail. Let's say that again. The refrain is, The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. So Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you I have taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, all my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Through the idols are legion that may run after, their, they, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer. Neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. And in the night watches, he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure, for you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. And that refrain again, the Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Give to us, Lord Jesus Christ, the fullness of grace, your presence and your very self. For you are our portion and our delight, now and forever. Amen. And there's just a few words about Psalm 16. It's particularly that beginning verse, Preserve me, O Lord, for in you I have taken my refuge. As we know, a refuge is a place of safety, often from uh, brutalness or violence or war. And in seeing God as his refuge, David, the psalmist, he must be in a pretty bad place. But he looks to God and continues to praise the Lord's name. I will bless the Lord. And so might there be any lessons here in Psalm 16 for us? They usually are, because being in a bad place means many different things to many different people. It can be illnesses, it can be worries, it can be loneliness, depression, anxiety, stress, tension and a million other things that make our world seem dark to us. And the causes of those are so many as well, aren't they? Money, relationships, separation, jobs, illnesses and so many other things. If we can see our Father God as a refuge in these times, maybe it's kind of like the roof. There it is, the roof of this posh shed that I'm sitting in right now. 
Maybe it's like that roof. Because things will all be always be challenging, but there's always something. If we trust in God, that means the rain might not get in. Or the worst of it, anyway. This week, um, me and many others from our St Andrew's Church family, we're returning to work full time in schools. Um, as the government have reopened and expanded the number of children that can go back to schools. And what strange places they are. They're not the places that we knew um, just a few weeks ago. Because so much of what made them inviting and wonderful places to, for children to be have gone. There's no hanging fabrics, there's no lovely soft reading areas, there's no sharing of lovely toys, of soft toys, of just the normal things that children come to expect in a school. And to make matters worse, the staff room's closed as well. And I have to admit that this week has felt pretty difficult. This week has felt pretty difficult. And that's coming from me, who, you know, I'm generally pretty positive, generally recognise. I've been, been very lucky in the way my life's panned out. So I don't really have a lot to complain about. But this week's been tough. And this morning I'd kind of recognised that it had been tough this week. And I thought, right, let's just see. So as I went to work, I sang a song. Might have looked a bit strange. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And the line in that song is 10,000 reasons to bless the Lord, maybe as my refuge, my refuge and strength. And this morning I was struggling to think of 10 reasons, never mind 10,000. But I thought, ah, well, let's just see. Let's just take a bit of time this morning to give this day to God. Because God is my refuge, it says so in Psalm 16. Let's just see. And... Of course, opening up my head, my heart, to the possibility that God could be a refuge in tough times, didn't have help. Didn't have help. Verse 7 of Psalm 16 says this, He is at my right hand, I shall not fall. And so tonight, thank you God for being our refuge. No matter what our difficulties are, they're not as bad if we trust in you. And so we can join together and say, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our reading from 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is prowling round like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, strong in the faith. And the responses that follow, feel free to join in with whichever bits you like, but particularly the bits in bold type. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. And the Gospel Canticle from Luke chapter 2, verse 29. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. And we join together. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Amen. And we're going to come now to a time for our own prayers. As we bring this day to God, we want to pray for the world, we want to pray for ourselves and those we love, and we want to pray for our church as well. So I'll just say a few prayers and then leave a space for you to say your own, to offer your own thoughts to God. So loving God, we pray for our world, the countries and the places and the people in it. This week, loving God, we particularly pray for the movement to try to recognise that black lives matter. We pray, Lord, that there's a recognition of the centuries, the decades of hurt, oppression and pain that people have suffered. We pray for bravery and we pray for a move forward so that all people would recognise the hurt and pain that has been suffered. And we pray for a movement to bring positive reconciliation and healing. Loving God, we pray for our world. Father, we pray for all those on the front line of fighting the coronavirus. We pray for their wisdom, for their safety and for the decisions that they must take. And we pray for the leaders of the world as they try to bring our world back to a sense of purpose, back to a sense of openness, back to a sense where people can go to work. But we pray, loving God, for the anxieties around that. And for all those for whom the job that they had just a couple of months ago is no longer there. Lord, we pray for our world. Father God, we pray for your church, your hands, your feet, your eyes, your ears, here and around the world. We pray for all those organisations who are in your name, trying to bring peace, trying to bring healing, trying to bring reconciliation to all sorts of troubling situations and places. And they do it in your name, loving God. Charities like Christian Aid, the Tear Fund, and for so many other people who are working so hard. And we pray, Lord, that your church's voice might be heard as a voice of love, of compassion, of peace, of forgiveness. Loving God, we pray for our church. Father God, we pray for those we love. We pray for our families, that they might be safe, that they might feel that we're all together despite being apart. We pray for those we know who are suffering. We pray for the people in our church family, loving God, who are suffering at the minute through worries about loved ones' illnesses, and we also pray for those who've suffered bereavement in our family, loving God. Hold them close. Loving God, we pray for each other. Oh 
Lord, from whom all good things come, grant to us, your humble servants, that by your holy inspiration we may think those things that are good, and by your merciful guiding may perform the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And so we join together in the words that Jesus taught his friends. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so our conclusion. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. Amen. And so thank you for joining me this evening for night prayers. I do hope that you've felt something, felt that you've got something out of this evening. Those last few lines, the Lord bless us and watch over us, make his face shine upon us. If you haven't already listened to the Darlington Blessing, can I encourage you to do so? It's a beautiful, beautiful song that not only blesses the people who is are being sung at, it certainly also blessed the people who were singing. So please do take a look at the Darlington Blessing. Amen. Take care.